Good day everyone. I am Joseph of Digitalytic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. Welcome to our course, Deep Learning Mathematics. In this course, we will learn about analyzing linear dependence and span. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the concept of linear dependence and span, relate dependence to span, and appreciate the roles of the concepts of dependence and span in deep learning. In our last lesson, we learned about analyzing identity and inverse matrix. We learned that identity matrix is a matrix that does not change any vector when we see or when we multiply that vector by that matrix. Interestingly, we learned that the structure of an identity matrix is that all of the entries along the main diagonal are 1, while all the other entries are 0. Aside from the fact that an identity matrix has 1s on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, it is also square. It means that it should have the same number of rows as columns. If you missed lesson number 5, the link is given in the description below. You may pause this video and come back if you're done with lesson number 5 for better understanding of this lesson. Do you still remember a negative 1? This one? So we said that this is an inverse. An inverse does not come or is not resulted to under all circumstances and nature of vectors. So it must comply with the requirements that a x equals b must have exactly one solution for every value of b. So there are two scenarios that we have to think of when we talk about linear equation. So the first one is that there is no solution. Let me write here. So no solution. So this is the first scenario. And the second scenario is that there is an in infinitely many solutions for some values of b. So infinitely many solutions many solutions for each value of b so let me repeat that there is no solution for the value of b and the second situation is that there is infinitely many solutions for some values of b now here's the take if both x and y our solutions then z is equal to ax plus the quantity of 1 minus a equals y is a solution for any real value of a so what does that mean so we're going to have that one as we go along with the process okay so maybe you would like to ask me what makes this possible the reason is that the fact that it is not possible to have more than one but less than infinitely many solutions for a certain value of b. I would like to repeat that because it's very important. The reason for this is that the fact that it is not possible to have more than one but less than infinitely many solutions for a certain value of b. So to understand how many solutions a certain equation may have, let's think that a column of A tells us a direction on how to reach B. So for example, we have this one. Okay, so for the moment, let's have this one. So this column tells us how many or how far we're going to reach B. For example, this is B from this point. So that means from the origin, so, for example, this is the origin, and we know that the origin is valued at 0. And how far will we go to the certain value of b? Right? So, here, the values that we have to go through for us to reach b are, so we have 2. For example, we have 2. Then we have 4. Then we have 6. Okay, so from 2, then 4, 
and then six. So these are the, the, the values that we're going to, to take note of. Or if we're talking about distance, these are the distances that we're going to take note of. Okay, so for example, A travels from the origin going to this point for two kilometers. That is for one day. And then the next day, this person, the same person again, travels from the origin going to the second point, which is B. Then the next day, on the third day, he travels again from this point going to this point. And that is for six kilometers. Okay, so if you're going to make a plane, our direction is like this. So this is a plane. So for example, B is to the north. And, for example, this is your starting point. This is your house, for example. This is your house. So, so this is where you start your journey. So on the first day, of course, you travel from here going to this. And on the second day, you traveled from this point to this. The third day, you travel from this point to this point. Now, the question is that how, how far have you traveled from this point to this point all in all? So it means that we're going to add all the distances. So we can see that uh, we have traveled or the person has traveled 12 kilometers. So generally, this kind of operation is called linear, linear combination. So linear combination of some set of vectors v1 to vn, let me write that, v1 to v n okay is given by multiplying each vector by corresponding scalar coefficient and adding the results so this can be done using the formula so we have this just for clarity so from time to time we're going to really tackle a certain equation or formula so in some cases it could be some kind of intimidating however if we're going to take note of and understand by heart how they function in real life then they would be more meaningful okay let's go back now let's go back to our distances so we said that on the first day he travels from this point to this point or if you're going to use our plane from this origin going to this going to the north right so on the second day four kilometers on the third day six kilometers but we have to take note of or what we need to take note of is that the person goes back every afternoon of that day. So we're going to add up how far this person has gone from this origin going to this. So what we'll do is that we're going to combine all the values of the vectors. So on the first day, 0 to 1, or we could say 0 to 2. 0 to 4 then we have 0 to 6 I think we need to use another color for for better okay we're using another color so we could see clearly okay so now 2 4 6 so what do you notice they can have a coefficient and the common multiple for them is 2. So we could say that 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And then we have the common coefficient which is 2. So because if you're going to multiply this coefficient to this one, the result will still be the same. So we have 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. And now we're going to add up. So if we're going to add them up, so 0, 0, 0, that becomes 0. 1 plus 2 or 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3 that becomes 12 so in short this person has traveled 1 uh, sorry up 12 kilometers from the origin of course we don't mind his 
the distance he traveled from the point going back home. We don't consider that because what we think and what we consider is from the origin going to this point. Okay, so it's not from this point go back and we have to go north again. Okay, so let's ask ourselves this time. What is the span of our vectors? So we have these vectors, one, two, and three. So we have three vectors. The question is that, what is the span then? Okay, so before that, let's define what a span is. So a span of a set of a vector is the set of all points obtainable by linear combinations of the original vectors. So, for example, if we're going to extend the line from this point, going to this point, maybe we could get 0, 0,8 or even 0, 0,9, 0, 0,7, 0, 0,10. That is if we're going to make some kind of extensions. So the same is uh, true if we're going to extend downward. So we could extend here downward actually. So that can be found in the same line as you could see. So the span is just here going up and going down. The question is that, have we changed some kind of directions? Of course, no. We've never swayed going to this right, and we've never swayed going to this left direction. So our direction is only going up, and we could go going down, but we're going to go or, or to follow the same line. So that, that is our course. So if that's the case, what are we going to do then? So for the system, AXB to have a solution for all values of B, B, let me write that, B, E, it means for all the values of B, element of R. Okay, so again, for the system AXB, remember AXB, to have a solution for values of B, E, R, so what are we going to take note of? What are the requirements for a certain solution to have, I mean, for, for a certain equation to have a solution? So this means that the requirements of the column space of A be all in RM must be satisfied. So this means that if any point in RM, if any point in RM is outside the column space, then this point is a potential value of B that has no solution. Next is that this requirement implies that A, A must have at least M columns and that is N should be greater than or equal to M. So otherwise, this dimensionality of the column space would be less than M. So remember that in this case, we only have one dimensionality. It's because there is only one direction. Okay, so later we're going to understand why we have zero here. So, but for the meantime, let's think that in this case, we only have one dimension because there is only one direction. And no matter how we add points, the direction would still be the same and it follows a straight line. So let's go back to this one for better understanding. So we said that if it's outside the column space, then it could be that it has no solution. So let's have this one as an example. 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 4 equal to, is equal to the vector 1 over 2. So our ma main objective here is that we're going to identify whether 1, 2 is in the column space here. So remember that in our first requirement, we are going to identify if any point in RM, if any point in RM, okay, is outside the column space, then, this is RM actually, then this point is a potential value of B that has no solution. So, we're going to prove if this one can be found in here. So, and how to do that? This is very simple. So, we can prove this using an elimination process. But since it is longer, so I prefer to have that solution in our next lesson. 
So the easiest way to know that your vector is not in the column space of a certain matrix is to examine if the columns are scalar multiple of each other. So examining our matrix, we can see that the first row is multiplied to negative 2 to arrive at its value. So see, this is just a multiple of negative 2 to, ar to arrive at the value here. So 1 times negative 2, then we will get negative 2. And then 2 times negative 2, then this gives us positive 4. So as you could see, this vector here is just a repetition of this one. Okay? So if we're going to plot that on a plane, then we could see here. So this is 1, negative 2 is here. Negative 2, 4 is here. And if we're going to plot 1, 2, then we could see that 1, 2 is here. So it means that this is too far from the column space of this matrix. So this means that the column space is lying in R2 with slope negative 2. This is the slope negative 2 because we multiply this by a constant negative 2. So this is actually what we call the slope. So it passes through the origin. So it it's very clear that in this case, the point 1, 2 is obviously not on this line. So that's very clear. So maybe at this point, you may ask yourselves why we are mentioning the n, which should be greater than or equal to m. What are they for? So let's go back to this example a bit. Remember this? This one actually. So, what we do here is just we, just, we have just taken the two vectors, 0, 2, and 0, 4, then just to make it a, a matrix. So, let's take the first two. So, that, that, that's what we've done. So, this is a 2 by 1 matrix. Again, so this is a 2 by 1 matrix. Obviously, we can see that the columns are replicated. So, because the values of x is 0. So we have the same column. Okay? We have the same column. Why? It's because the value of x is replicated. And in this case, the value of x, which is repeated, is 0. And because of that, our line passes through a straight line. So there is, there is some kind of redundancy and this is known as linear dependence. So maybe you would ask me, why is it that it's a linear dependence? In the first place, we said that there is redundancy. And if you're going to follow the line, then it does not change its span. And it would still be the same dimensionality, which is 1. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? This kind of concept is necessary and crucial when we are dealing with all sorts of mathematical proofs which are necessary to justify why a method should work. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is linear dependence? And then prove if this matrix is linearly independent. So we have the matrix 2, 4, negative 5, 10, which is equal to 1, 3. So do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell icon to be notified every time we have a new lesson. See you in the next session.